The Disruptive Dozen is a rank-ordered list of 12 closed-to-market, cutting-edge technologies that leading Mass General Brigham faculty feel will have the greatest impact on healthcare in the next 18 months. Number 2. Harnessing Technology to Reduce Health Disparities Multiple factors can affect health, from genes to diet and exercise. There are also important influences in the environment where people live, learn, work and play. These social determinants of health are increasingly recognized as critical elements of health and health outcomes. Importantly, addressing these factors, including issues such as quality housing, access to healthy food, and the ability to exercise outside in a park or other clean, safe facility, offers a path toward not only improving health, but also minimizing the health disparities that can arise from social and economic inequality. Now, a variety of health technology startups are working to address the social determinants of health. For example, some companies are developing software to help connect clinicians with community and social service providers. This shared platform enables providers to coordinate and track patients, especially those who are most vulnerable, and help them gain access to community-based support programs. Other organizations are addressing specific barriers that can prevent patients from accessing health care. For example, it is estimated that some 4 million people in the U.S. lack available or affordable transportation, forcing them to postpone or even forego routine and preventative care. By providing non-emergency medical transportation for these patients, enabled by technology that allows healthcare providers to book rides for their patients directly from patients' electronic health records, health technology companies are working to reduce healthcare costs and improve patient health. Finally, some organizations are tackling a particularly thorny problem, social isolation and loneliness, especially later in life. One company is working to address this problem by connecting seniors with local college students to share time and experiences with each other, thereby providing companionship and emotional support. So I think when we think about health equity and technology, two roads that we should take. One is that as we have advanced healthcare technology or technology in general to advance health outcomes, we often leave behind different corners of our population, people who aren't able to access the technology that we've already developed. So it's really important in terms of health equity to first think about that road, which is ensuring that as we develop and implement new technology, that everyone gets to benefit from these technologies. That often requires us to think outside the box on how to use technology to reach all communities, whether or not those communities speak a different language, whether or not they have different access to broadband technology, whether or not they have different access to smartphone technology, or a variety of other factors that can impact whether a given patient or a given community can benefit from a new healthcare technology. So we've seen that happen over and over again. If you go back 20 or 30 years and think about the advent of patient portals, online patient portals, which are you know tethered to electronic health records, we know for sure that the uptake of that kind of a system has actually uh, really been differential based on socioeconomic status and based on other factors that, uh, you know, would challenge people to access tethered uh, electronic health record patient portal. And we will continue to see that over time as new technologies develop. So that's the one road that we always have to think about. The second road that I often think about in terms of health technology and inequities is thinking about how can we use technology and new ways to specifically address the inequities that we see. So there's a little bit of a different take, which is not worrying about how technology is creating inequities, but how can we use technology to address specific technologies? And whether those technologies take the form of reducing language barriers, but those technologies may take the form of reducing health literacy barriers. They may take the form of being able to provide care in off-site hours or sort of off-regular hours or home-based care or virtual care. Those types of versions of care may suit people who have work schedules that don't allow them to take off time to come in to see their physician regularly and, and ultimately reduce access barriers to care and hopefully improve health outcomes. So I would ultimately encourage us to think of health technology as really having these two roads. One is make sure we don't leave people behind with existing technology. And then two is use technology, think out of the box to really help technology to solve existing inequities.